So the thing to sit with for me is to let life do its thing and accept it on those terms. Like to just accept even if the train's going off the cliff, ride the, tr- ride the train and ride off the cliff like this instead of like this. And um, that's really, really difficult because I think, let me get my thoughts straight here. I think that our need to be right, to have a solution, is to somehow think that that's going to give me peace. Right? That I figured it out and we're going to be okay if you just do what I tell you. Right? But really, what would give me peace is to just let the chaos be chaos. What's up, everybody? It's another week. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Mark Wahlberg, with my friend, Kalen Bean. Hello. Hi, Kalen. How you doing? Uh, always a loaded question. I'm doing well. Let's just say I'm doing well. Good. Grappling with life as life keeps lifing on, my boy. That's what uh, it does. That's what it does, whether we want it to or not. It keeps uh, going on. So, here's what's up. Um... I'm going to Vegas Friday. For what? That's a very good question. <laughs> I mean, on a, on a metaphysical st- uh, level, it's a very good question. There is, the answer is for no reason. So, uh, Morgan, my son, wants to go see the Grateful Dead on their last weekend at the Sphere. And said, let's do this. And so he's going to fly out and let's go to Vegas and do that. To be honest with you, really not uh, compelled to do this. But I do love Morgan. I love hanging out with him. It's always great. So I'm like down. And I know that this is one of those situations where um, my my tendency is I don't want to do anything. I just want to stay home and wait for life to change. Mm. which makes no fucking sense. And that having fun and doing stuff takes some energy. And uh, so I'm, I'm just committing to going. But let's add the DiCarlo wrinkle. Right. So it's going to be me and Morgan and then uh, Morgan's cousin friend, uh, Graydon, who is, remember I told you about Todd Smith from camping? Yeah. The guy who um, saves rainwater to flush his toilets, uh-huh. which is really, Todd, I'm sorry. That's not really, that doesn't define you, but it's just a point of reference. Kind of does. That he he's kind of, he, what he is for me, what his family is for me is practical thinking in an impractical world. When I'm, I'm Hollywooding out and, you know, Uber eating food and doing all the things, and they're a great touchstone to go, wait a minute, just dial back to like reality for a minute. Sure. Like they're my reality people. Sure. He's the rainwater toilet guy. He's the rainwater toilet yeah. guy. Um, he's the, I saw a log on the side of the road that's good firewood, let's put it in the truck guy. Yeah. Fucking love that. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm off track already. But um, so he said, I'm, uh, Graydon's going to go. I'm going to go. You're going to go. And I said, what about DiCarlo? And he's like, sure. You know, Mark, Morgan loves uh, Mark, and Mark loves Morgan, and he's a blast. You know, I always talk about how fun Mark is. So the four of us are committed to going to Vegas. So uh, I don't know how Graydon's getting there, but Morgan and Mark and I are going to drive there. So a couple things. We're going to see the dead, dead and Company at the Sphere, which everyone raves about, right? It's this whole thing. Um, so first of all, the plans, I think I've spoken quite a bit about how uncomfortable I get when it's not planned. Like, like I don't like flying by the seat of my pants. Um, but it's a DiCarlo thing too. So as it stands right now, I'm going to Vegas on Friday. We're going to drive, see the show Friday night, come home Saturday. Cool. It's, you know, midweek. And I don't have tickets to the show, and I don't have a hotel room. <laughs> so I, I don't have anything other than a, a car to get me there. And that makes me really uncomfortable, and it, it's brought up a lot of stuff for me. But we'll get into that, because God knows I can't just 
talk without getting ridiculously deep. But um, so uncomfortable for me to go to Vegas to get in the car and Mark's plan. You remember Mark, the guy who said, we'll leave our, our luggage at the fire station because they'll hold our luggage for us. <laughs> like that kind of thinking. Yeah. Um, Mark's plan is, don't worry about it. We'll we'll go on hotels tonight as we drive to Vegas, and we'll get a room cheap, and we'll be okay. When are you going on a trip? We're leaving Friday morning. Why don't you just go get a hotel? You said you don't have tickets either? No. Why don't you just get them today? Because that's a very good question. <laughs> um, so I guess, I guess I could go back and say that, like, when I'm on the road doing um, uh, Wheel of Fortune or Price is Right, and we have a day off, my favorite thing to say, and all of us are going to go, like the whole crew, like 11 of us are going to go spend the day do, and doing stuff. My answer to them is, whatever you plan, I say yes to. The making a decision about what we do and what I'm going to do today, I have no interest in. So it's fun for me to say, fuck it. I'm just going to do whatever and just say yes. So even to the point of like when we go to the restaurant and everybody's ordering their food, I say to the waiter, bring me something and I'll eat it. I just, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'd rather have a bad meal than make a decision about what I want to eat. So, uh, however, in this situation, I'm having trouble just doing that. So what I'm trying to do is just let it be like the, like the, Beatles saying, let it be. And by the way, heard that song the other day, and I'm like, wow, this is really much more powerful than you think. Just let it be. Let it, and it being everything, be, is where I've been living these days. We'll talk about impending doom and all that stuff in a second. Well, there's definitely a place for let it be and spontaneity, and we're just going to... Is This know, isn't it? <laughs> well, you're saying you're having trouble making decisions and planning stuff. Right. So it would probably be wise... If for you to go, all right, I'm going to do the thing I don't want to do this time. I'm going to make the decision. And I'm going to plan yeah. this one out yeah, rather than just accept, oh, this is what I always do. Like, yeah, yeah maybe get, at maybe least take get the, control of the maybe situation. Maybe get the tickets at least. <laughs> maybe. You think? Yeah. You think maybe get the tickets? Maybe get the tickets and you can always figure out a hotel on the fly. But yeah, yeah, yeah well, go get the tickets. Mark. Yeah. So, um, so I've chosen to say that there are four of us going and we're all in the same boat. So uh, I'm in their boat. So uh, I'm literally just going to just, I'm sure it'll work out. I'm just going to go, which uh, uh, leaves me a little uncomfortable. So now let's talk about, let's assume I get tickets, which is a big assumption at this point, because they're a fortune. They're a fortune. But I, I really want to see the sphere. I want to experience that. And the dead, I think, is a perfect marriage of the sphere, whatever that is. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Sorry about that. So, so uh, I'm... I, I'm going to do that, but then I started thinking about going to the dead and what that experience is, and, you know, Mark's like, you know, we can, we can do shrooms, we can do all this stuff, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing any of that. And then Robbie brought up a phrase this morning that just kind of, she always you can does. do a little. You can do, <laughs> just do a little bit. You don't uh, you know, need to if go I follow, If I follow <laughs> what I say, like, I'm going to just do whatever's in front of me, yeah. then God knows what happens. But here's, here's why I don't want to do any of that. First of all, I've shared with you the one time I did mushrooms and ha what happened. You and did a lot of them, though. I did, I did a, a salad's yeah. worth, and it was at the Grateful Dead. Yeah. Okay? But my fear is that the sphere already is so much, right? That the thought of tripping on mushrooms while that's going on, I think might just fry everything. If you do a full dose, yeah, that's why I'm saying just do a little bit. The giggly I, part? The giggly part, yeah. Just, so just are consult, you an enabler cons, right now? Consult with me. I'll tell you exactly All what right. you need. So, um, yeah, I'm not good at micro anything. I'm like macro everything. It's it's not exactly micro. It's like two or three micros. That's the sweet spot. The sweet spot. Yeah. But the one step beyond the sweet spot is not so sweet. That's like six steps beyond the sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. I, I um, So, anyway, I... I I, I didn't, I don't want to rage. I'm not feeling that. Maybe we'll gamble a little bit. Maybe we'll have some fun. Morgan's taking a really early flight out the next morning. So his plan is to stay up all night and just go. And I'm like, yeah, that's not me. So I need a room because I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to go to sleep at some point. But Robbie came up with a phrase. Robbie, uh, my wife and source of um, uh, all things uh, spiritual. 
and she says you're future tripping these days. And I thought that was interesting when we talk about tripping in general, future tripping, and what that is is that um, basically, you know, spending too much time in the future. And you know, there's an old adage that says if you're angry and resentful, you're living in the past, and if you're worried and fearful, you're living in the future. And uh, I'm I'm in the future a lot lately, and I'm really trying to to dial that back and how this relates to the dead. I'm not so sure, but my, my feeling is, is like, I'm not in a place where I want to rage or trip anyway, because everything seems so out of control. And I know that where I am right now is, you know, a general, a general state of, of concern. I, I wouldn't say worry, but concern about, I mean, politics, the Olympics, the noise of everybody, you know, disagreeing and, 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 and the election and, and then all sorts of drama around the Olympics. And, and I find myself at home going nuts about what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Oh, my God, what's going to happen in life, right? And so that's not really a good place to be to then, you know, go to the dead and do shrooms. You want to kind of be in this peaceful place. And you, there's an argument that says, that might get you to a peaceful place, but not at it. Yeah. Not there. No, <laughs> but I think really the, the takeaway for me is this future tripping concept is that how much of my life do I spend, um, under the guise of planning, under the guise of adulting, putting out fires that don't exist yet. So the concept of my days off and not, um, not, uh, uh, planning, mm-hmm. you know, just saying, let's just do whatever, you know, no attachment to any of it. Um, it, it that's a really good um, way to release this future tripping concept of worrying about what if or else or else or what if. If I don't do this, then this, or what about all the things I can't control happening? Um, and so I'm really trying to get myself to a place of just like going, none of it matters. Just nothing really matters at all. There you none go. Now, of it. now you're getting it. Yeah, nothing matters. <laughs> no. So, uh, so sort of between the, you know, responsible adult and the nihilist of like, there's, there's just no point to any of this this is where, where I'm at. And it's a little uncomfortable. I'm a little uncomfortable these days as I'm trying to figure it out. But um, I'm getting to the place of, let this weekend or this little trip just let's just let's just go let's just go and see what happens and what if no matter what unfolds including sleeping in my car in 110 degrees at vegas what if that's what happens and that's okay too like just letting it all just be what it is and riding the ride you know i uh, some uh, Years ago, somebody gave me this metaphor of um, how are you going through life? You know, we're both, we're all on the same roller coaster, right? And we're sitting next to each other and we're riding the same ride and it's going to have the same outcome. One of us is holding on like this, right? And the other's doing that, this thing, right? And we're on the same ride. We're having the same experience. Is this Mark DiCarlo telling you this? uh, (laughs) Mark's this guy. Yeah, I know. I'm this guy. Right? And I'm trying to be this guy, so I'm kind of like this guy right now. Um, but I, I think there's some power in realizing that... Um, yeah, you, well, let me put it to you this way. When you start to get self-obsessed and worried and stuck, it's when you... when your relationship to what's going on is disproportionate to the truth. And what I mean by that is you are living the delusion that you have any say over what's going to happen in, in life and in the world. Like you have any control. And I think one of the things about being human is that you uh, are constantly wanting to have some sort of control over the things that are uncontrollable life to make you feel better. But really the answer to feel better is it's all just going to be what it's going to be and just say, thank you. Um, But I'm really having a hard time with that. Well, you got to remember too. Let's what? say it all does go wrong. Okay. You go there. <laughs> it's hot. 
You get you into the show, tickets. you don't you don't get tickets, you gotta, you know, scalp tickets. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. get a hotel, you gotta sleep in your car. Right, it right. goes everything goes wrong. Right. I lose all my money at the tables. You lose all, all your all money that. at the tables. Yeah. You come back. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's it. <laughs> that's maybe a we great just memory. Story. That's a great story. I went to Vegas with my buddies for a work event. And when we were driving home, maybe like a half hour, 45 minutes outside of Vegas, my whole car goes to shit. All the lights go off. Engine stops working. We pull off to like a Denny's. We're sitting there for three hours waiting for AAA. AAA comes, picks up my car. I had a Highlander at the time. AAA comes, picks up my car, tow us all the way back to Los Angeles. Oh, no. But there's not enough room in the truck for all my friends. Right. So the truck driver puts two of us, me included, in the back in the, seat of the truck. Right. My other two friends, he puts in, in the, the Highlander that's on top of the towed car. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the air-conditioned truck with my buddy, just not thinking anything of it, while my two other buddies are in the back freaking out. <laughs> it is bouncing up and down. There's well, no AC, and we all talk about it to, and laugh about it to this Well, day. so the stories of life, like the stories we tell, the fun stories, in the moment aren't particularly fun. Right. Directly after them, when you've survived it, and life then starts to settle down, you look back and go, what a fucking great story. I know that I'm heading into... a. Uh, a 48 hours of what will be great stories that I will share with you guys really soon. So, you know, how, how do you just trust that, okay, let's, let's just go get a story. Even if it means I'm going to be uncomfortable for a little while, you know, how do we, you know, that's a good way of looking at it is that at the end of the day, even the tragedies, not tragedies, but even the inconveniences and the, 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 the experiences you have that don't go the way you planned end up being the stuff that you love to talk about. Like, that's the good stuff. But it doesn't feel like the good stuff when you're in it. It feels like the shit. Yeah. Um, so I know that there are going to be stories to tell. So what I keep telling myself is, look, I love these guys. Being with them always makes me feel better. I always have a good time. It's always a story. It's an adventure. Life is supposed to be about adventure. And I don't want to have any adventures right now. I just want to sit for a second till this, till, till when? Till things get easier or cleaner or it just, it's just, that's not going to happen. Life is just going to be messy every fucking day. It's just, life is just going to be lifing itself along and uh, you're along for the ride as opposed to driving. And I think that's the problem is I'm in the backseat trying to reach this steering wheel all the time, more now than most of my life. I'm like really just holding on too tight. So um, setting my intention to just enjoy whatever happens, including all the things that could happen. Well, you can't get out of life. You can't get out of it. And if you can't get out of it. Get into it. Get Who said it. that? That's fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're my one listener. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, so I've been... Then, since Robbie brought up this concept of future tripping, I had to really look at um, how much of that am I doing. And a lot of it has to do... Let's see if uh, Gary's not calling. Uh, uh, butt dial Gary is not calling. This is my sister. I'll call you back. Um Literally, this is the only hour I get phone calls. Yeah, the rest you of my life, no one calls me. But I, what I, what I think, I need. Let's let's have a little call to action, kids. If you want to play along with me, let's just call this. And I'm going to try to do this every episode. Let's let's try to find a game to play between this episode and the next episode in a, in a week. Let's play a game. And my game this week is going to try to be. Uh, recognize when I'm future tripping and stop that behavior and just say something like uh, everything's okay. Even if even the not okay is okay. It's all supposed to be there. And my life is proof of this, man. I mean, our lives are proof of that even the things that we think are just horrible end up paying us at some point. And, and the realization in the moment that it's of value or like I always say what happens to you happens for you um, the awareness that while it's happening to be going okay this is this is good 
Doesn't feel good, but it's good. So um, what's showing up for me is like um, this arrogance, uh, which I know is me just feeling not heard in the world. Like the world is going, and there's so much going on. I mean, there's Middle East issues, the Olympics, there's all this drama and people posting about, you know, the Last Supper and all this stuff. And I, the arrogance, let me just speak to that, is that I sometimes feel like I have the answer. Like shit shows up and people are freaking out about some issue and like who to pick as a vice president candidate or how do I feel about whatever. Um, I, I'm sitting here at home screaming to Robbie all the answers to all the problems of the world because I know what they are. And one, I can't talk about it. I can't tell you what I think because I've been warned by all of my people because my team, because I'm wicked famous, mm -hmm. um, has said, you know, try not to have any opinions about anything. Yeah, that's Which, terrible advice. Terrible <laughs> advice. I mean, it's great advice for career longevity, but it's also a cop-out. These days, I'm not even sure if that's true anymore. I, I, I don't I feel know. like it's flopped the other way. When so do you want me to just tell you all the answers to the world <laughs> that I've come up with? Your answers. I, I, your I'll opinions. tell you that in this future tripping I've been doing, like what's going to happen, what's going to happen, the thing that keeps showing up to me is that I keep hearing reactions from in the world of politics of uh, this side says this, this side says this, this side says this, this side says this. And I'm in the middle going, don't you hear what you're saying? Don't you hear? And I literally said to Robbie the other day, I think that if I were either candidate, I could get elected. <laughs> All right? I know. I know. I, I, I don't really think this. Well, maybe I do. Maybe I really do think this. <laughs> but it, it blows my mind that the obvious responses, the opportunities to win votes and change minds – seem to be overlooked, at least from my philosophy of what, what I think people should do. And so what's driving me crazy is this delusion that I somehow have been bestowed the answers. Like I, I hear it and no one else hears it. And I think that's a dangerous place to go. I think it's dangerous to think, think you're right all the time. And what it, what it then shows up as a character trait, I was going to say character flaw, but let's just call it character trait, is this thing I battle with, which is needing to be right. And what does that come from? Needing to be right, I think, is a product of feeling like no one's listening to you, right? And I think we do it all the time, and we do it to other people. We do it to the people we love. We, we l let me tell you what you should do. It's what I call actually, man. When you say something, I go, well, actually, here's what's true. And so what I'm trying to do is slow my roll a little bit and go, you don't know everything. And even if you think you know everything, it's okay if things go off the rails. And it's not, it's not my job to fix anything. It's just not my job. And that goes back to what we said before. How many jobs do you do that nobody pays you for that you think is your job to do? And right now I'm taking on the entire world of everything with what I think are answers to all of the problems of the world. And it's exhausting me. And I have to, I have to um, slow down a little bit to say, even if what you say has merit, even if what, even if what you think may be the right thing for people to be doing, <laughs> um, I can't control it. And it's just going to be what it's going to be. So the thing to sit with for me is to let life do its thing and accept it on those terms. Like to just accept, even if the train's going off the cliff, ride the, tr ride the train and ride off the cliff like this instead of like this. And, um, that's really, really difficult because I think, let me get my thoughts straight here. I think that our need to be right, to have a solution, is to somehow think that that's going to give me peace, right? That I figured it out and we're going to be okay if you just do what I tell you, right? But really, 
what would give me peace is to just let the chaos be chaos. Just let the chaos be chaos and be okay with the chaos. And that's what I'm not okay with. I, I, I'm having trouble letting things be outrageously fucked up and just let the chips fall where they fall. So this weekend is going to be me uh, letting the chips, actual literal chips, I think, because mm-hmm. we probably are going to gamble, um, let them fall where they may fall. And laugh at, this is what I, it was so powerful what you gave me the other day, which was, you know, the things that trigger me to laugh when they show up as opposed to pretend it's okay and then be just stewing all the time. Yeah. So that's been working for me, by the way. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, and I'm staying prayed up, all you Mark Wahlberg <laughs> fans. <laughs> um, DM him your... Uh, yeah, DM yeah. Hey, yo, yo. Uh, I, I still, you know, I still uh, feel the need that every time I get a, a DM or, or a response of somebody thinking I'm him, that I need to pass it along to him so that he hears it because that matters. Um, but but it has helped quite a bit to reframe that cringe by laughing at it. So I think that's what I got to do about everything is that, you know, the world's going to do what the world's going to do. We're either going to, it's going to be the end of the world or it isn't, you know, what, whatever my biggest fears are may actually happen, and what do you do then? What do you do then? You can't fix it. So, you know, again, what what is this podcast is, is about? It's about, for me, it's about me trying to figure out how to just be lighter and enjoy the ride more and worry less. And worry is exactly that future tripping. It's, it's exactly living in the future, not in the moment. And... Um, I talk a good game, but I'm not walking the walk. I'm I'm uh, I'm not um, actively working to manifest that happiness for myself, and it leaves me really shitty. It leaves me um, preachy and uh, fearful, and nightmares and concern and helpless. And I think there's some power in helpless. In the sense that, you know, we look at helpless as like I'm not doing something I should be doing and I want it to be different and I can't do anything about it. So, you know, everything's out to get me. But helpless could be reframed as acceptance, as it's not your job. It's not your job to fix anything. Your job might be, well, my job (coughs) is to somehow figure out how to navigate this and still be light and have fun and enjoy my life. And remind myself that right where I am today, air is coming in out of my lungs. This, by the way, is something I try to do all the time that maybe you want to try, is that when it gets overwhelming, which obviously it is for me quite regularly, I have to just take a short list check. Um, Is my heart beating? Is air coming in out of my lungs? And if those things are a yes, everything else is less important. Like, just keep it that simple. Like, you know, I'm not hungry. Uh, My heart's beating at a pretty good rhythm. And air keeps, and when I breathe in, it comes in. And when I breathe out, it goes out. So I'm I'm alive. Everything's all right. And anything beyond that is not my job to worry about. Um, And I think that might be the key to being a little happier. Uh, So maybe just try that. Maybe just try... Reminding yourself that you're breathing and your heart's beating, so good for you. Congratulations, you you made it through another moment. And really, that's it. There's nothing more to worry about than that. You know, if you want to worry about that, you can. But even that, if it stops breathing and stops heart beating, that also is going to be exactly what's supposed to be. But uh, it's just, just life is just an uncomfortable ride a lot of the times for some of us. And for those that it isn't, I'm really envious of that. For those who really have figured out how to just kind of be more breezy all the time, uh, you know, maybe it's ignorance is bliss. I don't know, but um, bliss is bliss. And I'm not having a lot of bliss right now. I'm, not, I'm having a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of fucking concern. And th- again, this arrogance that, if everybody would just listen to me, we're all going to be okay. If you just do this, don't you see it? It's right in front of you. And that's just, 
it doesn't serve anybody. It doesn't serve anybody, and it it's it's showing up with uh, in my relationships too. Is like you know, I realize you know, I, I was going to probably save this for another day, but let's just go here. Is that uh, one of the things that this is, that has shown up for me in this is how I express my love and support to the people I love. Okay. Let me see if I can get this out of my face. We often, I often behave in a way that's couched in because I love you and I care. But it's not heard that way. So it really isn't loving. It's self-serving. Right? So if Robbie comes to me and she's grappling with something and I see very clearly the course of action that will solve that problem, I had this epiphany that's taken me 35 years to get that while what I'm saying may be of merit, while what I'm saying is meant to be loving and help the person I love, you come in, you're coming to me with an issue, you're feeling something, and I have an opinion about it. Here's my opinion Hope it helps. But what I'm realizing is, more often than not, that's not helping at all. It's not helping at all. In fact, what I think is being loving is actually not at all loving. It's shitty. So um, so what I've been working on, Robbie's, Robbie's taken on a project, like a big project so that she's been wanting to do for years. And we've been talking about it in my kitchen for years, and it's a breakdown for us. She comes feeling a certain way of having not done this thing and why she's stuck, and I give her why she's stuck. Don't you see this? It's so clear to me. You know, if you just do this, then you can get unstuck. And then what happens is a shutdown of the conversation where she feels judged by me and overwhelmed, and I get angry that she's not following my advice, and then we're broken down, and she stops what she's doing, in the project, like the forward movement, and I'm the reason, okay? And what I realized is, um, do if I really love her, and I do, I think you all, guys are all clear, um, would I behave differently? And I do this with strangers all the time. I'm very tolerant with strangers. I'm not so tolerant with the people that are really close to me. And so I had this kind of epiphany that, um, again, not my job. Even, even if what I'm saying and what I'm suggesting, in my opinion, would help the situation, my communication of it isn't helping the situation. I'm making it worse. And what I don't want to do is shut down anybody's, you know, you, it's so hard to stay motivated to do something that's important to you. Because the things that are important to you that you want to accomplish, sometimes you're in a way of because it becomes bigger than you. And what I got, the epiphany is, what do I really want to be? I want to be support. That's what love is, is support, right? And I want to be that guy. And what I think is being supportive is obviously not being heard, even if I still believe in my soul that it is the right thing. The better thing to do is to say, I understand, how can I support you? And just keep it, th and then listen to what's said, and then follow it, even when it's stuck in your throat that you want to say something else. And so, what I'm really uh, committed to is redefining how I express my support and love for others, because it's hidden in support and love when, in fact, it's domination. Just fucking domination. I'm just like, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you what to do. And then when you don't do it, I take it personally. And so, again, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. So, um, that's another thing I'm going to try to do, which is really a, a rest behavior. Notice when I get hooked into a situation where I have a clear cut opinion of what should happen for everyone it's just like what mark was talking about when we were uh, talking about travel he was like if she just do what i tell her we're gonna travel much easier but that's a breakdown of communication that makes her feel bad 
And I was trying to make that point to him. It was so clear for me to see it for somebody else, but not apply it to myself. And that actually the loving thing to do is let it go off the rails, but go off the rails with them. Yeah. You know, and that's really difficult for me. I really just want to fix it. And I, I'm getting that that wanting to fix it is so that I feel more powerful at the expense of somebody else as opposed to letting it all play out and riding along next to the person you love off the cliff. And, and it shows up in parenting all the time. I mean, this is a parenting thing like huge is that we want to protect our children from harm. And so we're constantly grabbing the wheel to steer them out of danger that we've seen because we've lived a little longer. And that's the right feeling to have but as I said to Lynette, and I've said before, if we do that, we rob other people of the opportunity to make the mistake and have their own lesson. The stuff that makes us human, the, 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 the tapestry of life that is the mistakes we made is why we are who we are. And when we try to, out of love or um, misdirected love, we're trying to help but we're not helping. We're shutting down the communication. And the open communication lives somewhere in, I think, letting it go off the fucking rails. Mm-hmm. Let's, ride the, let's ride the roller coaster off the cliff together, and I'm going to be this guy next to you instead of this guy going, I can't steer this thing out of danger. So um, it, it just leaves me really, really uncomfortable. But I'm wise enough to know that um, no growth happens comfortably. And uh, I guess I'm tired of growing. I guess, I guess part of it is I don't want to do any of the work to be a better person. I don't want to be more enlightened, right? I don't want to fix my character traits. I want others to accept them as right. I want to be me, like I got it figured out. And I just want you to say, boy, you got to figure it out. And there are enough people in my periphery that say that to me. So I'm like, yeah, that's right. Oh, no, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help, you know. But what I'm actually doing throughout my entire um, sphere <laughs> is I'm shutting down conversations over and over again by trying to just impose my will out of what I say is love. And so I'm, I'm just really working very hard to uh, stay right here, even if it's not where I think we should be. Um, and also, you know, this, this kind of fall, fall, uh, flies in the face of the other issue of like, I, I keep saying that, what, why, do, why, why am I even doing this podcast? What do I have to say that anybody matters? So you kind of want to say that what you have to say matters, but it also needs to only matter to you, right? Not enforce what you think matters on others so that they agree with you. Because that's just not loving. It's not what anyone needs to hear from you. And so I, I, I'm excited, actually. Let's just put it in a, a positive thing. I'm excited to be a new guy that doesn't break down every conversation by trying to be right in the guise of, I love you, so let me help you. Even though you didn't ask me for help, you just asked asked for me to, um, you're asking for me the exact thing I'm asking from you. You're asking for me to just see you and hear you and no more than that. And that's all I keep saying is, don't fucking give me advice, just say I get it. Yet, I'm not that guy. I'm not, <laughs> I say that a lot. I'm not that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I can't seem to um, actually selflessly love the people I love. And so to uh, my kids and my wife and to all the people close to me, I guess what I'm saying to you is I get it. And um, I will fail at this, but my effort will be to not fix you ever. Not fix you, but hear you. And maybe, you know what's interesting about that is as soon as it's the same, mm, going way down the wrong path here. What's interesting, it's like a golf swing. (laughs) This is so stupid. It's so stupid. To, To hit the ball purely 
means to trust your swing and do the thing that your brain says is going to cause you to miss hit the ball. You have to throw the club and let go of it and not think about the result and commit to that moment right there, right? And I think there's some parallels. I think the fear of things going off the rails makes me be react a certain way that immediately shuts down any possible communication. But you get to the same end if you don't impose your will on others. You get to the same end, you get to a better end actually, that if you choose to not insert your belief system into a situation in hopes that it's going to save their life and let them go off the cliff, it creates a space where maybe the thing you are thinking that could help gets asked and heard as opposed to cramming it down people's throats. I don't want to be the crammer of throats. <laughs> there you go. You, you don't want to mark that as a quote you want to say for social media. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, that, I guess that's what I'm, I'm going to really work to try to become is that breezier version of a guy that listens first before they jump in with the answers. Because first of all, you don't have any fucking answers. I don't have any fucking answers. Um, I have what I think are answers, but nobody really asked me for answers. They asked me for support. And that's the difference is that as soon as somebody asks for support, I think I'm being supportive by saying you should do this or here's what I think and blah, 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 blah. When an actual, when actually support may look like simply, wow, I get how difficult, I, I get what you're grappling with and uh, you're okay. And how can I, how, wh what do you need from me? That's a lot more loving. You know, that's a lot more loving than, let me tell you what you do, need to do, right? That, that guy just is an asshole. And I'm that, I'm that asshole a lot lately. I'm not that guy on TV. On, the, on TV, TV's Mark Wahlberg is so emotionally intelligent and so, so thoughtful and caring. And, um, but Mark Wahlberg, this guy, uh, disproves that a lot. And I, I, the other thing about that is that, like, the things that cringe us out, those are messages. It's cringy because we don't want to hear it. But if we listen to the cringe, if we listen and lean into what's cringy about it, we can really easily break that apart like a dirt clog and go, wait a minute, okay, this is just me being me in this. This is not cringy at all. Cringy is, as I said before, cringe lives in me concerned about what other people think or me feeling I wasn't heard when I was trying to be heard a certain way and it was misheard or whatever. But if you take that out of the equation altogether where it's not your job to do any of that, Everyone around me is going to be at ease and I'm going to feel a lot more at ease because I won't have that on an agenda or more importantly, I'm not going to feel like I got, you know, sloughed off. You came to me with a problem. I gave you an answer. You didn't want to hear it. So fuck you. There's enough energy on that, you think? <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be a battle for me that I'm I'm committed to winning. So uh, he uh, maybe... Boy, this is as rambly as I've ever been, but it's up to you guys. It's not up to me to tell you how to do anything. So um, uh, you can figure it out if you're still listening, which I really hope you are, like a couple of you still. But let's just try this. Let's just try not solving any problems this week. Let's, let's try to ride like this and let it go off the cliff. Because, by the way, the cliff doesn't exist. This is me flat-earthing you right now. The cliff that we're going to go off to demise doesn't exist. And if you ride the roller coaster like that, because the reason we hold on like this on a roller coaster is that we think we're going to die. But that roller coaster has done that path 100 times today and nobody died. So there really was no cliff to hold on for. You're in. And... Again, we get to have a choice. And if the choice is to do this instead of this, uh, we're going to be a lot happier. So um, 
that's that's where I'm at today, you guys. I'm uh, I'm um, uncomfortably sharing with you uh, what I'm grappling with and what uh, I'm going to. You know, it's okay to grapple with stuff, but it's not okay to grapple with stuff and not make a commitment to um, arrest the behavior that leaves you upset. And so, if what I'm feeling these days is upset that everything's out of control and I want to control it, and I'm wise enough to know that that's a delusion, that I have no control, we have no control, and there's actual peace. There's actually peace in the realization that you're not in charge, so you can kind of be a kid. You, you don't have to run the show. I'm not running it, even though I tried to, and so what I'm going to do this week is really work to keep that energy of trying to fix everything and redirect that into accepting it as is and reminding myself that everything's just the way it's supposed to be. We're okay, you guys. Even if who you don't want gets elected, we're going to be okay. Even if we ride off the cliff, we're probably be o- going to be okay. And um, it's really uncomfortable. And if it makes you uncomfortable, then that means that you're growing too. So um, I, I don't know if that made any sense at all. I'm just... Um, uh, hoping that something I said lands for you makes your week a little bit better because, uh, you know, I don't want to have another week like the one I had. I just spent the whole week angry and uh, blaming everybody else and stomping my feet and screaming a lot to the world, why don't you fucking listen? And uh, I think I'm excited to spend the next week uh, not caring if anybody listens. I can listen to me, but I don't need to worry about anybody else you're all going to be fine you're doing great uh and uh the sun probably will rise and even if the sun doesn't rise it doesn't rise on all of us so you can't control it so fuck it if 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 tomorrow's the end there's actually peace for me in the thought of the end of the world (laughs) that me ending scares me if we're all going down at the same time at least i got some friends and fuck it you know we're, we're okay Let's all go together. So um, let's just, um, let's breeze it out next week, you guys. Let's uh, work to not fix other people's problems. Let's stay on our side of the street. Let's uh, remind ourselves as often as we need to, and for me it's every 10 minutes, that it's not that important. Even the things that are important are not that important. And the what if, like what if this happens There'll be plenty of time to worry about that when it happens. And so don't waste time worrying about it now and making you and everyone around you miserable. So that's it. For those of you who I love dearly and I have been an asshole to, I apologize. And I hope you have a little room for grace for me to uh, grow up a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm going to work on. Hopefully when you I see you again, you'll be like, oh, Look how light and breezy you are. <laughs> Look at you, Mark. You're, you've really done some progress. So that's it. Anything you want to say? No, you said it all. Yeah, I've said it all. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I, I think what I've described as being more like what you seem to be. Like you have a breeziness about you that um, uh, it's not without a dark shade. Uh, but there is a breeziness of acceptance that I admire in you. Yeah, maybe too much acceptance. <laughs> is there such a thing? Yeah, there's such a thing. Uh, you got to take the reins every once in a while. <laughs> uh, I guess that's fair. I guess balance. I guess yeah. that falls under the heading of balance. But if if I've got to um, err on one side or the other, I'd rather be on the side that you're on than the side I'm on for no other reason than self-preservation because the energy it takes to grab the reins every fucking time is leaving me miserable. And I don't want to be miserable. I don't want to be miserable. If I can't do it for me, I'll do it for other people. I want to be able to sit with people I disagree with and let the disagreement happen without having to correct it. I would like to be in a situation where when someone says something that's not factual, um, that makes me crazy, to not let it make me crazy. To just let that happen. That I, I, I look forward to being at a restaurant 
and ordering my food. And when Robbie goes to order her food and makes the waiter crazy, and because I've worked as a waiter before, I'm thinking about, honey, don't you understand that the longer you talk about how you feel about um, sun-dried tomatoes is how much time he's not giving to the other table in a station of five tables that he's got to deal with. And aren't you aware of this? And let me show you how this should be and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's the waiter's problem, not mine. <laughs> and I'm not helping her by telling her to order faster. I'm just being an asshole. So, uh, from one asshole to, um, <laughs> I was gonna say one asshole to another, <laughs> but that's not fair to say. Um, let's just say that, um, uh, thanks for being along for the ride. Thanks for letting me work this out with you guys. Um, if you've got comments, guys, send them to me. I'd love to hear what you think. The truth is I don't want to hear what you think because it might hurt my feelings, but I'll be okay with it. So go ahead, tell me. It, it'll make me better. So I appreciate it. Um, have a great week, you guys. Um, this week we're going to let it go. And um, let me know how that goes for you. Hopefully it, it works out. Uh, and if it doesn't, it's not my fault. Because... I'm not in charge. All right, see you next week.